And hello all my fellow nerds out there, this is Oracle Nerd Richie and welcome back to Cemetery Mary. Now, in the last part, uh, Zapara pulled a prank on- In the last part, Zapara pulled a prank on Mary, and it was not the prank that she, Krovin, and Theo agreed on, so... She kind of went a bit too far, and it caused Mary to run away from the house, and we bumped into Reginald. So, now we have a choice to either follow Reginald, or walk away from him. Um... I didn't really get any comments on the last video, um, at all. Nobody decided to vote for anything. So. so, I guess this choice is up to me. Once again, I'm trying to interact with you guys, and... Well, I'm not blaming you, it's, it's probably me. I, 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 I probably didn't, I, did, I probably didn't pitch it too well. But enough of my, enough of my rambling, let's just get on with it. Um, so... I did save before this, so let's go ahead and follow him and see what happens. I took a deep breath and followed him down the alleyway. He was standing next to a door that I only noticed because of its golden handle. He raised a finger to his lips and said, shh. And then he opened the door. Oh my. Whoa! Is that a bar? Well, it doesn't look like a bar, it looks like a coffee shop. It was a coffee place. Oh, I didn't even read the title thing, what the heck. It was a, a coffee place. And it was adorable. Pretty string lights were hanging from the walls and ceiling. And calm music played throughout. There were decorations in, in, of intricate tape... Tape... Tra tapestries, and in addition... In addition of some rugs to soften the hard concrete floor. There were very few people that and they hardly made any noise as they spoke. As if they were in a library or trying not to disturb anybody else. Not to mention the aroma. Even if I don't like coffee, I can't deny how pleasant the smell is. All of it together, it felt magical. See? I told you it was nice. This place seems seems so delightful. How did you discover it? <laughs> That's a secret. But maybe I'll tell I'll tell you one day. We stepped further into the building, Reginald closing the door behind us. Ooh. Then I followed him to the counter, and he asked what I wanted. Oh, don't worry, I can pay for myself. No, no, please. I insist. Consider it a thank you for accompanying me. Are you really sure? Positive. Reginald ordered himself a coffee, and I asked for hot chocolate for myself. I felt a little silly ordering it, but the barista didn't seem to have a care at all. Even when I asked for marshmallows. <laughs> After we got our drinks, Reg and I, Reginald and I plopped, plopped down an empty couch in the building. You got you got a styrofoam cup? Paper, actually. And no worries, it's recyclable. I think the mugs they offer here are cute and better for the environment. But, well, how do I put it? I'm just particular about using the same things as other people, that's all. I believe e they even allow you to bring your own mug, but that's a little silly, isn't it? To bring a mug from home? Because I would need to wash it afterwards. It might look absolutely absurd carrying a mug down, down the sidewalk. <laughs> you got a point there. Anyways... Are you feeling any better? Oh, who? Me? Uh, yeah you, Mary. You're the only person he's talking to. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not crying anymore, so that's a good thing. I think... Thank you for bringing me here. No need to thank me. I'm just glad you're feeling better. But if it's okay to ask about now... What had gotten you so upset in the first place? Well, I guess it's okay to talk about... 
Especially since you want since you know these people anyways. Where uh where do I start though? Well, I spend a lot of time with my kinda cousin and I recently met his other friends. I told Reginald all about what had happened since I first met him. I don't know why. It was like I had st I had to start with one thing, but then that led to all the other things too. I told them how intimidating they were when I met them, and about how disrespectful they disrespected the cemetery, and about the incident that happened with them just today. Already, I was trying to block it from my memory, and Reginald listened, nodding along as I talked. It felt nice to have someone listen to me. And then I ran to you on the sidewalk. Now, now we're here, I guess. Sorry for going on like that. <laughs> I just wasn't sure where to begin. Or end. Why are you apologizing? I'm actually very happy you told me. It's not good to always let things where you... Wait. You know, Mary, I must admit... I'm not... I am not at all a violent person. But oh, how I wish to teach those those dogs a lesson right now. Where do you get all thinking that kind of behavior is all right? No, no, it's it's okay. I just I won't hang around them anymore. But at least I tried, right? That's all you can do in life. Try. But yes. Don't worry about people like that. They clearly can't appreciate the good thing that even a good thing even when it's even when it's right in front of them. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. And it means a lot to me too. Just then I received a text message. I took out my phone. Croven a message. Mary, where'd you go? You're not at the cemetery. At least I don't see you here. I don't want to see you right now. Oh, that, that's it, painful. Are you looking... I, I, think, I think that'd be a stupid question. Are you looking for me? Yeah, that seems obvious. Um, yeah, I'm not there. Actually... I put my phone away without responding to him. Would it would it not have mattered on which which answer I chose? Reginald, are you busy? Hmm? No, not really. I was planning to run a few errands, but it's nothing that needs my, my immediate attention. What do you ask? Can I come along? You want to run errands with me? Yeah. I don't really feel like going home. At least not right now. Well, if you're certain, you're more than welcome to come along. I would more than appreciate the company. Thank you again. I spent the rest of the day helping Reginald with his errands. It wasn't anything too big. We bought some stuff from the hardware store, things he needed for a bit of DIY car repair. Wrenches, screwdrivers, antifreeze, oils. But nothing too big to carry. I also helped him pick up a few groceries. He was running low on milk and eggs. But he had picked up some strawberries too before before it, before they go out of season. It wasn't anything too exciting, but it was nice to be able to do something simple with him. I enjoyed completing those simple tasks with someone who wasn't trying to trick me or make me cry. Before we knew it, it started to get dark. I told Reginald I ought to get going. <laughs> get home safe, safely then, alright? I promised him I would. And then went and then went to catch the next bus home. Well, at least the idea wasn't completely bad. Or at least that's what I thought initially. But once I made it home and opened the door to the cabin, someone was waiting for me. Was it Croven? And he was not happy. <laughs> About fucking time you got home! Where the hell were you? You didn't answer any of my fucking texts! Of course I didn't! I... I'm mad at you! You're mad at me?! I'm the only one who's supposed to be mad here! Do you have any fucking idea what could've happened to you? It can't be any worse than what you and your friends did to me! Ugh! Is this really what this is about? Get the fuck over it, Mary! 
You always just want to make fun of me. I can't get over that easily. None of you even apologized. Oh, I'm not even sure which one to say here. Um, let's go ahead. None of you even apologized. Yeah, that seems that seems like a more reasonable answer. None of you even apologized. Ugh, seriously? It's not like I can fucking control every little thing they do. You should know how they are by now. Besides, what they do isn't my fucking fault. So, so I don't know why the fuck you're getting so, so fucking mad at me. Because you let them do it. You never, you, you never say anything. Maybe they'd stop if you didn't keep letting it happen. Hey, don't start turning this back on me. Maybe, maybe if you weren't such a sensitive crybaby, we wouldn't be having this problem. I can't believe you'd say that. Don't call me a crybaby, you're making fun of me again. I can't believe you'd say that. I can't believe you'd even say something like that to me. Oh, give me a goddamn break. You know, maybe this, that's why you're so mean to me lately. Huh? Come again? What is that supposed to mean? Hang around with such awful people. No wonder you become such a bad person. Oh, really now? That's how you feel? That's not what I meant. No, it isn't. I didn't mean it. Uh, these are all somewhat the same answer. I don't think it matters. It is. It is how I feel. I don't, I don't know what point you stop. But you definitely aren't a good person anymore. I don't know who this person is. But the Croven I know would have never been so cruel. The Croven you know? Ain't that rich. Let me tell you something. The Croven you knew died with the other fucking Cro... Crovusons. Proven! You can't say that! Ugh, I'm so fucking over this already. If you really hate me that much, why are you even still here? I can't believe this shit. I'm sorry. Then maybe I should just leave. If that's how you really feel. Maybe you should. You take your stupid fucking baggage with you. Proven stormed off after that. I went the other way and marched upstairs. I felt like crying all over again. But I think I, was, I used up all my tears for the day. I was, I was going to text the number again. Because, well, it's what I always do before I go to bed. But when I opened my phone, I was surprised to see I had a few messages from someone else. It was Twyla. I hadn't really seen her since the nightclub. Hey, Mary. I know it's late, but so I don't blame you if you're already in bed. But I figured if you, I'd ask you anyway, since it's not overly time, overly time sensitive. I'm going to be at the library tomorrow, looking for anything I can, I can find that might help with the town's little problem. I figured you could come and help me research if you're up to it. Yeah, I can come help. I think that'd be a really great idea. I'll be sure to be there first thing tomorrow. Well, I don't even. Well, I don't even know if I'll be there that early. But I'll be there to see you there. I had agreed to meet with Twyla. Maybe part of me did did it in spite of Proven. But it would be not a nice distraction, I think. A distraction from all the bad stuff that happened today. I would have to think about it tomorrow. When I got up the next morning, I heard myself out of the house. I wasn't even sure if Crowden was still home. But I wasn't going to stick around long enough to find out. I headed to the library as quickly as I could that morning. And even though Twyla said she wasn't going to be around so early, she was there when I arrived. Twyla, you're already here? Oh, hey. Yeah, I'm here. I thought you said you wouldn't be here so early. Eh, I don't think it's super early. But that's not the point. You're here to help me research, right? Uh, yes, of course. <clears throat> Just tell me what I need to do. I'm gonna need you to fetch some books for me. Twyla handed me a list of books she needed. 
I worked in the library before, so I know where they are. I mean, honestly, I can kind of I can kind of see Twyla as a library worker. I just want I just want you to pick a pick a few up for starters. All right, I think I can do that. Uh, yeah, I sure hope you. I sure hope so. I took Twyla's system again to grab the books for her. There are a few psychology books, but also some filled with, like, periodicals? Is that how you describe it? I don't know. But what what I did know was that if I kept carrying so many books at once, I'd topple over. It's happened before. I began to hand them over to Twyla. She seemed very focused, and she took the books from me. Sometimes when I'd hand her a book, she'd slide one over to me with the pages open. I would close it and go return it to the proper shelf. It was only a matter of a few books that I realized she was probably anticipating I read the, I read the passages she had, she had opened to. Oh well. I kind of just continued fetching her books and shelving them back again, absentmindedly. <clears throat> it just seemed like, like the best thing for me to do, to be able to help. I doubted I would understand the information as well as she did. I am, well, not the brightest at times. You're distracted. Uh, am I? You certainly seem a bit out of it. Is everything alright? Well, I, uh, I had a play with my friend last night. We still haven't made up. I see. Well, that's not going to help us here. Huh? If you want, if you want to help, you're gonna have to pull yourself together. I know the issue we're dealing with is much more serious than whatever dumb fight you and your friend had, right? I guess. Yeah, sorry. Are you going to be like this the whole time? I don't know. You, ch you can leave. Are you sure? I thought you needed my help. Clearly you aren't going to be helping me at a time like this. Oh, don't take it too, so harshly. I'm doing you a favor, if anything. I can call you up next time if I, if I need something from you. Just remember not to forget about all of this, okay? Okay. I'm sorry I couldn't be more of a help. It's fine. See you later. See you. I left the last of bo books on the table for her and headed out of the library. I wasn't much of a help at all, was I? I'll be here to it. Dude, what the fuck? Crovin? What the fuck are you doing in there with her? Didn't I tell you to stay away from her? What? What did you just, like, not listen? Or not care? You're trying to piss me off at this point, aren't you? I'm trying to help her with something. Not like any of your business in the first place. <laughs> Excuse me? That girl is definitely my business. Especially if she keeps talking to you. What's so bad about her? You can't just tell me not to do something and not explain why. Why not? You don't trust me anymore, huh? <laughs> and I guess it's just as well. Let me tell you this then. Either you stay the fuck away from her, or you stay the fuck away from me. Corbin stomped past me after that. He didn't apologize when his shoulder bumped into mine. He just kept walking. Yeah, Corbin's a bit of a dick now, isn't he? I hoped that wherever he was going, it wasn't home. Because that was the only place I wanted to be right now. Even if it seemed like he would prefer I'd not be there anymore. I want to ask you something. You always do, don't you? Please. Apollo. Apologies, it wasn't it, I wasn't meant to appear sarcastic. Go on. Are you after the people who aren't who aren't me? Do you Do you know who I am? How do you mean? Like, do you know about other people connected to me? And if you do, are you coming for them too? Please. Wait. Yes to which question? I'm sorry. I have to go. Come on. Answer me, you stupid mysterious number. Why are they never talking to me? Good night, Mary. 
if that's even less informative than the last three times. Yes, I counted. There was three or four. Days passed, as days often do. Things in my house have been incredibly tense. I can't even recall the last time I physically spoke to Crowbin. Maybe it was that day at the library? I don't know. I really don't remember. It's not like I don't see him at all. But when we do see another, one another, we don't talk. It's really awkward. Sometimes we don't find ourselves in the same room. One or both of us will just leave. We don't say good morning or good night. And if I see someone in the street, he looks away. I wish things weren't like this. I just really want things to be back to normal. Back before. I really want things to be better. I want him to apologize to apologize. Oh, I don't know. Because saying for him to apologize would be a bit selfish, wouldn't it? Because I think Mary, during the argument, she wanted to apologize to Croven, but her her emo she was fueled by emotions at that point. To apologize, I should, shouldn't I? I know Croven has been having a hard time lately. I'm just, and I'm sure I haven't been making things much easier for him. It's partly my fault, anyways. His friends don't have to be my friends too. And even if he wanted me to get along with them, I should have stopped, stopped away. I should have stepped away when I realized it wasn't going to work. I'll, I'll try to tell him that sometime soon. Want to know how and when to properly say it. I sat in the living room for the remainder of the day. At least until dinner time, that is. The fire was on, I was reading, but I knew I would have a have to start cooking something soon. Then, I heard Corbin come through the front door. Still not feeling comfortable being in the same room as him, I got to move to the next room. When... Uh, oh? Uh huh? <laughs> Mary. <laughs> you know I love you, right? <laughs> like, even when I'm mad or yelling. <laughs> I promise I don't mean it. <laughs> I really, really, really don't mean it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love you too. Um, are you okay? No. Theodore died. Oh shit! Theo's dead? No, my boy! My boy's gone! Shit. The Theo's dead? I turned around and hugged Crowbin properly this time. I didn't ask him what had happened. He didn't seem to be in the mood to talk about it. And uh, I don't think I was either. I helped him prepare the service. Or perhaps it's more apt to say that I prepared the service because he asked me to. You're so passionate about it. He told me. So I know you make sure he, ha he has the best one. It was just... I don't know if passionate was the right word. I hope it was a nice service. I had to think it was. I try my best to pull it all together, after all. I got lots of flowers and a nice spot for him to rest. Crowman was responsible for inviting, for inviting everyone. Everyone wasn't a lot of people. It was, I wasn't sure if it was because no one wanted to attend, or if it was because Theo only had this many friends. I looked around. Zapparo wasn't here. Zapparo wasn't here either. Oh. I 
eventually everyone began to leave. But again, everyone wasn't that many people. Theo. Before I knew it, it was just me and Crovin. And me, Crovin, and Theo. Wordlessly, Crovin sat beside Theo's freshly dug grave. I did the same. <coughs> Normally, I enjoy funerals. But perhaps it's better to say I appreciate them for what they are. But this one was hard to appreciate. I couldn't find, find a trace of pleasantness in it. <coughs> Not even a little bit. I just felt sad. Proven? <laughs> Is there anything more I can do? I'm sorry, are you okay? Let's just say I'm sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. Right. Oh, I don't want to upset you. But if it's okay, I want to try talking to him. Mary. This isn't the first. This isn't time for that ridiculous shit. I'm being serious. I promise you that it works. I have never I've never been bad on my promises before, have I? Please, just give me a chance. Fine. If you're so insistent then, go ahead. But, when you wake up, you want me to tell me something that only Theo would know. Because if you can't, I really don't want to hear this ever, about this ever again. I understand. But I won't let you down. I lay down atop of Theodore's grave. I could see Crowan wins as I did. Hopefully it would be over quickly. And hopefully Theo would be in the mood to talk to me. Ooh, call out, listen, feel, take a whiff. <laughs> take a big whiff! <laughs> uh, look around. It's completely dark. I can't see a thing. Take a whiff. It smells like... Ugh. Smells, it's something smoky. Feel. I feel like I'm, I'm laying on something. But I am laying down on the ground, right? It feels weird, though. I can't really describe it. Mm. Listen. It sounds like faint static. Hmm. But if I don't focus, it... It's like it disappears. Call out. Hello? Is anyone there? I don't understand why can't I see anything? There are all the times where things start going wrong. Well, maybe it'd help if you took off that took that lampshade off your head. <laughs> wait, 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 what? Huh? You're Theo! Yo, it's my boy! <laughs> Hey, dollface. Long time no see. Oh, Theo, I, I, I just have a lampshade on my head. <laughs> I, I'm so glad to see you're alright. You sure that's the word you want to use? I, well, <laughs> I suppose you're right. Still, it, still, it seems like you're, it seems, seems like you're okay. Wherever this is. Where is this? This? This is where me and Zapparo live. At least I used to be. At least it used to be back when I was alive with you and all. Oh. You... you lived here? Hey now. I know it ain't the prettiest. But it gets the job done. I suppose so. Things green here. You seem to have a pretty good understanding that you're dead. the first question. It seems like the most logical conclusion to make. Close your eyes, things go black. When you wake up, someone completely different. Not really a lot to say. Wait. Not really a lot of ways you can go from that. Oh, while you're here, I guess I want to say I'm sorry. I kind of figured the whole ghost talking thing of yours was a bunch of bullshit. But I 
I can admit when I have been proven wrong. Oh, that's... that's okay. I mean, I think I'm more sorry for you than in this situation. What well, you remember happening before this? What do you remember happening before this? I think this is probably the better question to ask. Let's go with it. What do you remember happening before this? Full? Uh, hmm. Well, it goes like this. Full is having enough time when to talk about you. He wanted to talk about me? Yeah, but I'll come back to that later. So he reached out to me and Zach wanted to talk about it over drinks and all. Of course we accepted, so we spent the night out with them. <coughs> staying at the bar or whatever. Maybe like an hour or so with the drinks are feeling like not too hot. I leave to use the bathroom and start fucking vomiting as soon as I'm in the stall. I come out feeling woozy, Zach and Crow trying to help me all void and shit. Next thing I know I'm crashing on the onto the middle of a pool table that was in the middle of a game. Then I'm here. You're here. All because Crow wanted to talk about me? I... If I hadn't been such a problem for him, then you would have wound... Would have wound up here. <coughs> hey, shut the fuck up. Huh? Sorry. Didn't mean for that to come out that way. What I'm trying to say is... I'm sure I would have drunk myself to death eventually anyways. So don't worry about it. <coughs> if that night hadn't, didn't kill me, the stick in my hand would have made sure it was coming. I still... Listen. I want you to know that Coven only wants to talk about you because he cares so much. I know things haven't been the best with you two lately. And there's lots you don't know. So it's been real hard on him too. What don't I know? I may be dead, but there's still things Coven would kill me over if I told you about. I know you and I aren't too close as people. You, I know you and I aren't the closest two people in the world, right? But trust me when I say, it's gonna be alright. I guess I'll have to. So, how will you stay here for anyways? Oh, uh, I'm not sure exactly. I could wake up any minute, now, now that I think about it. <coughs> Which reminds me, I promised Coven that when I woke up I'd tell him something that only you would know. As proof that I talked to you. So, do you have something you can tell me? Yeah, I've got a few stories between Crobin and I. Pick your poison. The sleepover hat story, the spiral staircase story, the orange juice story. Oh, which one do we want to hear about? Um... Um, I think the orange juice story would be the funniest one to listen to. I'll, I'll, pro I'll probably go back and listen to the others on my own time, but... Let's go with the orange juice story. The orange juice story? Oh boy. Hmm. How do I even start with this one? Well, I mean, I kind of assumed it was something stupid like orange juice or something. So, something with, like, spiked orange juice or something. Oh no. No. Honestly, I, you'd probably wish. Huh? Okay, so it's like... Eh. Have you... Have you ever made orange juice come out of someone else's face? I... what? Okay, so... We're at the beach. Summertime. Chillin', whatever. Crota's eyes is gonna hang on, on, on the umbrella. That's fine. That's cool. <coughs> I go play with Zap in the ocean a little bit. Come back to... Down to the boardwalk, give myself a soda, yada yada yada. I see Crow and I coming up from behind him, still sitting under the umbrella. I said I'm gonna be an asshole and scare him. I come up from behind and slap my hands on the back of his shoulders. And and what I didn't realize is that Crow had been drinking some sort of orange juice or some shit. And when I scared scared him, he fucking coughed it right out. I'm talking hacking. I'm talking I'm talking orange juice all over his chest. But, like, it just didn't come out of it. It just didn't come out of his mouth. Oh, was it... Was that out of his nose? Oh, God. <laughs> it came out of his nose, too. And also, a bit squared out of his eyes. Oh, God, no. No, no, thank you. Oh, that's, that's disgusting to think about. Ow, ow, ow. I didn't, like, imagine that. Oh, don't worry, it gets worse. He grabs my soda out of my hands, thinking it's water, rinses his eyes out with, pours it directly into his eyes! Oh my god, Croven, you idiot! Croven, you lovable idiot! Oh my god, was he okay? I mean, yeah, eventually. He bit his own arm, arm to keep 
keep from swearing in front of all those kids at the beach. And Zipara never knew this story? Nah, by the time she came back, Krogan was all taken care of and didn't feel like talking about it. I'm sure if you asked him to retell the story today, though, he'd laugh. Probably. I see. Thank you for telling me. Hell yeah, dude. It was a great- it was a great day. Oh, and uh, one more thing before you head back. Say hi to Zapara too. And go easy on her for me, okay? Listen, I know she seems all firecrackers and dynamite. Maybe even a little rough around the, the edges. But she's got a lot going on deep down. And I know she'd appreciate some help with that. I'll appreciate it too. I see. I'll try to talk to her next time I see her. And let- and let her know you sit, said hi to him. Oh, please do. I'm excited to see my boys again soon, but I'm hoping that it'll be a long wait at the, at the same time. Hey, yeah, I hope so too. Before I knew it, I was out again. I woke woke up as sound way to cro avoid Croven. Yo, Mars, come on. It's getting late. It looks like it's gonna be rain soon. Mm, Krobin? Yeah? You poured soda in your eyes. Is that the real reason why, why they're redder than usual? <laughs> I mean, she did say, she did say to tell him something only Theo would know. <laughs> it's a beautiful day today. After so much, after so much talk of rain, I had I had even brought my umbrella. But it was a clear it was clear I wouldn't be needing it. <laughs> the sun felt so warm, so much brighter today. I hope we could get more sunny days like this before things start to get cold and cloudy again. Because right now I just felt so it just felt so refreshing. I was on my way to the cemetery once more. I didn't even have flowers this time around, but but I was sure that what sure that was okay. I brought a teddy teddy bear last time after all. Oh for sunny for sunny day! Oh so cute! Besides, I now have a different method of being able to visit there everyone there. I try to visit Theo too when when I'm able to. I don't want to bother him too much. And even though he and I aren't best friends or anything. I can tell he appreciates it. I think I'll try to see him again today. I continued down the sidewalk, admiring, admiring the things I looked so much happier in the sunlight. The birds and flowers and the trees. But one thing that didn't ma didn't was making its way towards me. I didn't realize it, but I heard her snap my name. Oh, was it was it Zapara? Nope, it was Twyla. Oh, Twyla. Funny running into you here. I see you're out enjoying the sun. <coughs> I haven't heard from you. I haven't heard a lot from you, you know. <laughs> yeah, but like, likewise, you know. Mm -hmm. But I've been investigating on my own time. I need to remind you that you're the only. You're the one who offered to help me, and not the other way around. Uh. I don't want that killer on my tail. I don't know where to start. I've been really busy. Let's just say we've been really busy. Yeah, I'm sure you've been. All those headstones don't talk to themselves, right? Um, I'm sorry, Twyla. I just... I... I don't think I can help you anymore. Excuse me? Huh? Not help me in anymore? You haven't helped me once! And now you've got this gall to back out before I even started? What's that for, huh? Well, it's just... Just what? I can't be around you anymore. We, we, got, we gotta be on Kroven's good side again. I, I kinda wanna just keep going down a Kroven route at least. I can't be around you anymore. I'm sorry, but my friends, when they found out I was doing this, they, they're they looking out for me, so I don't want to worry them, and I'm really, really sorry. I 
should have said something earlier, but I hope you understand. Oh, I understand. You do? Yeah, I do. I, I get it perfectly clear. Why bother helping me catch a threat? When it could help fill up all... Fill up that precious cemetery you love so much. Whoa, what? Hold on, that's not true. I'd never risk someone else's life for that. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Just like how you, w just like I was sure you would help me. I apologize for lashing out. So, I'm just running low on patience. You might, you might know it, but I won't tolerate, tolerate. You might not know it, but I tolerate a lot of bullshit from a lot of people. But one thing I refuse to tolerate is people who don't keep their promises. So go on then. Run to your little cemetery, Mary. I'll let you go. But I'll make sure you keep that promise eventually. <coughs> Twyla angrily pushes past me after that. Okay, I'm starting to think that Twyla is a bit of a dick. I, f I felt hurt to say the least. Hearing what she thought of me. Yeah, see, with friends like that, who needs enemies? There's a bug in my window. Thankfully, it's on the outside. I couldn't help her anymore. And it had already come out eventually. <coughs> and it had to come out eventually. At least, at the very least, it was something I thought I got over with. I couldn't let it, let it ruin today. I wiped my eyes with any tears and tried to regain my composure. I tried to focus on the nice things around me that I could, as I continued on my way. The birds, the flowers, the trees, the birds. The flowers, the trees. I couldn't let it get to me. She didn't know the truth like I did. And I couldn't keep Theo waiting. I continued on and up the way. The, and entering the cemetery, something fell off. And I didn't know why until I started approaching Theo's gravesite. Oh? Someone was there at the gravesite. Is it Zappy? Zapara? Is that? Uh, hey, wait! I followed them as they ran from me. They got out of my sight quickly, but I was determined to find them. I walked up and down the, out the aisles, trying to keep my eyes and ears open. Until event eventually, I began to hear something. I followed the noise which led me to a tree, and... Zapara! Zapara? What are you doing here? I took a seat beside Zapara, patting down the grass as I did so. She wiped her eyes from her sleep as I sat up. Hi, Mary. Hi, Zapara. I am... Are you alright? Yeah, why wouldn't I be? Don't I look fine? You, uh... You were staring at Theo's grave. You missed Theo, right? You wanted to see Theo again, didn't you? You wanted to see Theo again, didn't you? Hmm? No, no, I... It's... Really, I... I'm sorry. I was just leaving. Don't worry about it. Zapara. I am... I'm surprised that you... Well... What? You didn't show up on his funeral at all. I couldn't. Why not? You didn't want me... You didn't want me in here anymore. After the last incident, I promised Theo I would respect your boundaries. But I guess I broke that promise anyways, huh? I wanted to leave- I wanted to leave you before- Leave before you saw me, at least. Zapara, I- I wouldn't have stopped you from seeing him. I'm so sorry I made you feel that way. No one should ever be prevented from seeing their loved ones. It's fine. I had already upset you enough. It's just nothing's been nothing's been the same now that he's gone. And I'm not sure if it ever will. It's it still feels so unreal. I just I walked into our place and I'm ready to start. Like I don't know, hitting him with some jacket sleeves or stealing his hat or running away with it. And now when I come home, it's all by myself. There's. 
but all this stuff still smells like him. It smells, it smells just like, just like before we left for the bar. His mug is still in the sink because he said he would wash it later. And his paper is full because he, we were going to do laundry together. And the TV remote is still stuck in the couch because that's where he last left it. He was my best friend. And now he's totally gone. I'm never going to get him back. I'm never going to get him back. I'm never going to see him again. That's, that's not true. I promise one day you'll see him again. But, it's, but not in this life. Isn't that right? I don't know what to do anymore. I don't feel like myself. At least, not without him. I'm all alone. You're not alone. Krobin's here and I, I haven't talked to Krobin since. Really? I don't know what- I don't know what I'd say, or what it would feel like. Three of us were always together when we hung out. It feels unfair without him. It feels wrong. It will get better with time. I promise you it does. Maybe it won't always be the same, but it will be better. And Zapara? You're not alone. I know Krobin would want to hear it from you. I really think you should you should see each other. Even if it's awkward. You should know that. I'm here for you, Krogan's here for you. Oh, which one do I say? Oh, this seems like an important decision. Um Oh, I don't even know. Um Hmm, let's go with I'm here for you. And I know Krovin is too. Even if I don't always think you think you were the best person, that's just because we didn't get along doesn't mean we can't, doesn't mean I can't help you through this. So Oh Thank you, Mary. I could really use the support right now. Of course. It's going to get better. I promise. I've got another question for you. I thought you might. Have you ever lost anyone? Why do you ask? I just want to see. Of course I've lost people. I don't I don't think there's anyone alive who who hasn't lost someone. I've probably been more than you could ever fathom. I've probably lost more than you could ever fathom. How did you feel? It always starts the same. It begins with devastation. But over time, those feelings, you get used to them. It's like a blur. You stop worrying about who died. You start worrying about who's next. There's no rest. So you become someone who doesn't need rest because it isn't going to stop. You just have to be ready to put. You just have to be ready for next time. That sounds heartbreaking. It was, and it's why I'm fighting so hard, so that you don't wind up like me. What? Whoa, 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 hold up. What? What do you mean, wind up like you? It's been a few days. Alright, I think I'm gonna cut this episode off here. Um, wow, that, that was a lot for one episode. Oh, if I don't even know how to feel right now. But, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, comment what you think, share this with your friends, and be sure to subscribe to the so you don't miss a single notification. I'll see all of you in the next video. Goodbye.